Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's bookbinding tutorial, I'm going to show you three methods for creating a perfect bound photo book or book text block, whatever you want to use it for, using a very equipment intensive, a less equipment intensive, and a complete DIY method. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a like. So in the photo book world, the most common type of photo book binding is perfect binding, which you can see here. There's no standard definition for perfect binding, but what it usually means is that the book is not lay flat. It's not made up of signatures. It's basically standard loose leaf sheets, which are printed double sided and they are glued together at the spine. It's a very strong adhesive that keeps the pages together, but it doesn't allow the book to open fully flat. And it's a very cheap and quick way of making photo books or books, uh, novels, notebooks, anything you want to do for yourself. Now, technically, perfect binding usually involves glue, but many photo book companies who sell perfect bound photo books are actually stapled photo books. So the pages are stapled together and then attached to the cover. So in this video, I'm going to show three methods. The first one is going to use a proper hot glue binding machine, which is like a proper perfect binding method and is the easiest one, but it requires you to have one of these machines, which to be honest is not very expensive. But if you just want to create one book for yourself, it's not worth buying. It's around, I think, four or $500 for the cheapest one. Uh, if you do a lot of books or a lot of notebooks, a lot of photo books, then it's definitely worth the investment. It's very cheap to operate and very easy to operate. The second method is going to show you how to create a perfect binding book with a heavy duty stapler. And the last method is going to show you a complete DIY method where we're going to use PVA glue on our fingers, uh, trim the book with a knife and a ruler and make everything with our hands. Now there is a difference between these methods in the time that it takes to create a book and in the final look as well. But depending on how much you want to invest into bookmaking and how much experience you have, you might want to start with the DIY one first. Now the cover of the book doesn't make any difference to the actual binding. So you can have a hardcover or you can have a softcover book, but the inside is still perfect bound as long as the pages are printed as single single sheets, double sided, and they are glued together at the spine. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you just the soft cover ones as it's easier to, to work with and making hard covers would take way too much time. Also, just a couple of tips for the design. This is not a design tutorial and I'm making blank books here just for the sake of the binding tutorial. But if you're printing photo books and you want to design your photo books, it's the simplest way to design them because you don't have to think about spreads and you don't have to think about booklet printing. So you can just print the sheets double sided and just make sure to leave a little bit of a bleed because we're going to do some trimming. So possibly half a centimeter bleed on each side. And I would use a, a bigger margin for these kind of photo books because when you open the photo book, it's not going to open completely flat. So there's going to be a little bit lost in the gutter in the middle. So let's dive in. So let's start with the first method, which is going to require a bit of equipment and a little bit of investment. So here's what you'll need. You'll need some loose leaf paper for the inside text block. This could be a5 sheets or A4, whatever book size you want it to be. You'll need uh, a thicker cardstock for the cover. You'll need a printer if you want to print the insides of the book. And you're going to need a manual guillotine or any kind of guillotine that is capable of cutting multiple pages at once. You'll need a scoring board to put the score lines into the cover and you'll need a hot glue binding machine to combine all the elements of the book. Of course, you'll find a link to all of these products in the description below. So here are my loose leaf A5 sheets. I've got 80 sheets, which is 160 pages here. And all I have to do is make sure that they are nice, neat and tight together. And then holding them tightly together, I have to measure the size of the spine because I will need to score my cover and I need to know how big the cover is supposed to be, especially if I want to have spine text. Now this one, as you can see on the measurement, is around one centimeters or nine millimeters. So I'm just going to score the page for one centimeters because you have to account for the thickness of the paper when you fold it. To score the cover, which I printed on a 300 GSM thickness paper, 
uh, and it's an A4 sheet, so it's not going to be long enough for the book. I'm going to use my Easy Score board from Amazon, which I absolutely love, and it creates very clean crease lines and it makes a very nice, neat edge. I'm going to start by making sure that the spine is in the middle and one centimeter apart. And then I'm going to do two more score lines, one centimeter on each side, just to make sure the cover can open nicely when you start paging the book. And once the scoring is done, I can go to the binding process. The first thing I have to do is put the folded scored cover into the machine and then place all the sheets inside making sure it's flush against the edges. If it's not flush against the edges you can always trim it later but if you manage to do it really nice and neat then there's no need to trim the upper and bottom side. Once I have my sheets inside I have to fix it with the handle. Then I'm going to do a quick crease on the bottom side with the right handle and turn it around upside down and then with the left little tool I'm I'm going to make the top edge very rough. It has two little blades in it and it can kind of cut the paper in a very quick motion. So the adhesive is going to bind much better to the edges of the sheets and they won't fall apart. Once that's done, I'm going to dust off the bits of paper and then push my glue roller around maybe three, four times. It depends on how thick the book is. Then quickly turn it around, press it for five seconds and then the book is done. You have a clean edge, it stays nice and strong together. Now, as you can see, the binding is done, but I still need to trim the outer edge, the longer edge of the book because my cover was not long enough. But the bottom and the top side looks um, neat enough for me. If you want, you can always trim all three sides, but if you do a good job with the binding, it's enough to trim just one side. Now I'm going to trim the book using a manual guillotine. Now this one is a heavy duty one, so it can cut through even quite thick books. All I need to do is set the measurements to make sure I have a little bit of a bleed when I cut the cover to make sure there's nothing showing. And then press down one quick turn and the book is finally trimmed and finished. Now, as you can see, the book doesn't open fully flat because the spine is very tight and it's very strong but the good thing about that is that you can actually hold the entire book from one page and it's not going to rip out. If you really force the spine open it's going to open flat but then you're going to damage it and it might break apart sooner. Now let's move on to the second binding method. This is going to be less equipment intensive and more DIY and for this one you'll need loose leaf paper for the inside book thicker card for the cover of the book. You'll need a ruler, a sharp knife, a heavy duty stapler and some long staples. You'll need a printer of course and a glue stick or PVA glue to attach the book cover to the text block. Again you'll find a link to all of these products mentioned in this video in the description below. Now for the second method, I'm going to start with scoring, but let's assume that we don't have a scoreboard. So what you can do is just measure out the distances with the ruler and using the ruler, try to fold the paper as nicely as you can. Now it's never going to be as neat as with a scoreboard or scoring device, but you can still do the exact same job and you can still bind your book and then fold it. And it's the same results, but slightly less neat edges. Now to bind my loose leaf sheets, again, I've got 80 sheets, 160 pages. I'm going to use a heavy duty stapler. Now, as I said, many companies use stapling as a perfect binding method. You can buy these again from Amazon. They're not very expensive, but they need special kind of staples, long ones and strong ones. It has a strong handle and all you have to do is make sure that the pages are flat and horizontal. So if the book block starts bending, then make sure to readjust it because then once it's stapled, it's going to have wobbles in it. Check which staple size you need for the size of the spine. Make sure it's the right staples and I usually Usually put just three staples spaced evenly onto the spine and three clicks and the binding is done. If you want to make it a little bit nicer and flatter on the back side and the front you can flatten down the staples or use a little hammer and then it's going to be more flush once you put it into the cover. Now that my book block is finished, again, I have to crease my cover. I can use the scoreboard or I can use my ruler and I have to make sure that the book is a snug fit. So always do this before you glue it inside the cover. Now to glue it in, you can either use PVA glue or you can use a stick glue actually and it works just as well. I'm not sure if it's gonna last 
maybe the same time. I haven't tested it that extensively, but they both seem to be really strong. So I'm going to glue in the inside of the cover, the spine and one centimeters from the spine so the book attaches to all three sides. And then once I glued the inside of the cover, I'm just going to press it really strong against the book block and it should be all glued. Just let it dry for a couple of minutes if it's a stick glue, if it's PVA glue, give it at least an hour or two. And then once it's done, you have to trim the book again. Now let's assume that we don't have a guillotine, so we're going to trim the book using the manual method. Now you can use a ruler and a very sharp knife for this, and the key to cut a huge bunch of pages with just a knife is to be patient and do light strokes, many, many light strokes. If you press the knife really strong, it's going to be a very ugly edge. It's not going to be even and it's going to catch onto the paper and pull it. But if you use light, gentle strokes many times after each other, you'll see that it takes a little bit longer, but it's going to look much nicer and you can still trim your book just like with a manual guillotine. Now here you can see the two books trimmed in with the two different methods side by side. You can see the top one is the guillotine one and the bottom one was done with the knife and that's the difference. So both of them look quite good and depending on how much patience you have, you might get identical results. And for the final binding method, which is the least equipment intensive and the most DIY, here's what you'll need. Loose leaf pages for the inside of the book, a thick card for the outside cover, a sharp knife, a ruler, a printer, PVA glue and a book press, which could basically be just two bits of cardboard and two clamps. And don't forget, a link is going to be to all of these products in the description below. Now, the final binding method is the lengthiest, messiest, but it requires the least investment. So I'm going to have my loose leaf sheets again, and I'm going to put them in between two sheets of cardboard and using some kind of a clasp or anything that helps you to keep the pages tight together, really Really tied together without moving and once you have that built up you can put the book somewhere down in a place where it doesn't move so easily because you need to use your fingers or a brush and this time we're going to use PVA glue to bind the edges. Now before you use any kind of glue ideally you should get again the edge of the spine a little bit rough so you can either use a saw or you can use some kind of a file or in my case I'm using just a knife to make some random cuts in it so it has some ridges and it's not completely smooth it makes the adhesive stick on much better better and is less likely that the pages will fall out later on. So it's a very good thing to prepare the gluing process. Now I'm using this PVA strong standard glue, which is acid free. And I'm going to put one thin layer on the spine of the book with my fingers, but you can use a brush as well, making sure that it doesn't drip anywhere on the side. So always cleaning it up. And I'm going to wait maybe 20 minutes for it to dry. Then I'm going to do a second, third, and maybe a fourth coat as well, depending on how patient I am and how well it binds. The thicker the glue is, the stronger the binding is going to be and the less likely the pages will fall out. Now this method is not as bulletproof as the hot glue method because it's, it's not the same kind of glue, but it still works really well, especially if your pages are very tight and they have little ridges in them. After a couple of hours, my glue is finally dried and you have to make sure that the book opens nicely and the binding is strong. And when you check that, you can again prepare your cover again, score it, fold it, and make sure it's a snug fit for your book. Now, obviously, since this is a very DIY method, we're going to use a uh, stick glue again, or PVA glue, whichever you prefer, to attach the book to the cover. And then in the final process, you can again use your knife and ruler to trim the edges and the book should be all finished and done. So this is the end of my book binding tutorial for today. Now, just a couple of tips or advice on these three methods. Hope this gave you an insight into what perfect binding is and how to create a perfect bound book for yourself. Now, the strongest one of the three methods is the stapled one because the stapled one will never fall apart. It's really strongly held together with the staples, but it also has a con. It's the one that's going to open the least lay flat or to put it in other words it's the one where the most is going to get lost in the middle because the section where the staples are is not going to open so you're going to lose approximately half or one centimeter on the inner margin 
The second strongest one is the hot glue binding, which works really well and it allows the book to open fully if you really force the spine and it's still not going to fall apart. And the least sturdy one is the PVA glue one because it's just very difficult to get the PVA glue to be really strong, especially if there's nothing to reinforce the spine like mull or um, threads or anything else. You can add all of these things, but it's much easier to do that in a hardcover book than in a soft cover book. If you have any questions about these binding types, leave them in the comments. And again, if you want to check out any of the tools I use, there's going to be a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, subscribe for more.